Hello to everyone out there. Uh, we hope and pray that you are doing well and uh, that you, God sustain you by his grace and that you're growing during these times. Whatever it is, whatever you're going through, we just pray that you are doing well out there. Now, the title of this vlog is going to be, What is God Revealing to You About Yourself? Uh, so that's kind of the title of the vlog, and we'll get to why I called it that. Once again, the title is, What is God Revealing to You About Yourself During This Time? Now, the Christian walk is often about finding balance. If you've known anything about me, if you hear me talk, I always talk about wrestling to find this balance. For example, we say things like, we are saved by grace. Uh, that we can't earn, there's nothing that we can do, and yet we see things about need to have uh, good works and bearing fruit. Another example of two extremes are, are some Christians can fall into what we call legalism, uh, but then some will go the other extreme to fall into lawlessness. Walking rightly with God requires balance. It really does that we need to find in our walk. We need to do it. Uh, another example of this is we're called to speak truth. Uh, we are, we're told to speak truth. In fact, um, we're told to speak truth, and if we hold back truth, we're not loving people. To uh, hold back truth that could be difficult to somebody who's actually unloving. Yeah, we need to speak truth, but we need to do it in love. It says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we can have all the right answers, say all the right things, speak truth, and still not love. So truth and love go hand in hand, but they require balance. Balance can be difficult to find. In fact, finding that balance can be so difficult as we search the Word of God that it can actually begin to appear like there are contradictions. Of course, we know that God's word does not contradict itself, but it can appear that way at times. So often as we uh, look at living out the Christian life and as we seek God's truth in his word, uh, we'll find what I would call a dichotomy. And if you're not familiar with that word dichotomy, here's what it means. It's a division or contrast between two things that are represented as being opposite or entirely different. Now, one apparent dichotomy uh, is the teaching or the idea of examining our faith and having assurance of salvation. Let me say that again. One area that looks like it's a dichotomy or contradiction would be the idea of, of assurance of salvation, yet self-examination of our faith. No beyond a shadow of a doubt, I want to say this with the utmost clarity to you out there, dear brother and sister in Christ. Okay, no beyond a shadow of a doubt, and don't let anybody tell you differently. Both are clearly contained in the scriptures. And if you reject one aspect of it, if you reject the idea of self-examination or reject the idea of assurance of salvation, whatever you may reject, if you reject either one of those, you're rejecting God's word because both of them are contained in God's word. And it's one of those things, again, where it's difficult. Like, how can you be assured of your salvation yet self-examine when not your faith is genuine, but yet there's a way that we can do that and we are called to do it. We're called to find that balance. So self-examination and assurance do coexist. And any believer... Okay, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, if you desire to mature in your faith, to grow in your faith, you need to wrestle to find that balance. Now, I want to share a few scriptures to show you uh, that we are called to, to self-examine. The first one to me is 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It says, examine yourself, whether or not you are in the faith, test yourself. Do you not know that you yourself are in Christ Jesus unless you have disqualified yourself? Another time that we look at a scripture that talks about self-examination is when we do a communion. Now, we at Mission Creek Church, we do it once a month. We sit down, and during the church service, we take a moment to really pause and reflect back on what Christ did for us. Uh, it goes back to the Passover meal. But when we take communion in 1 Corinthians 11, here's what Paul said to us. He says, Therefore, whoever eats bread or drinks the cup on the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat and drink the blood of the cup. So he's saying as you sit down to do communion, okay, you're partaking of the bread, you're drinking of the cup, you're doing these sort of things, uh, you need to examine yourself because if you partake in an unworthy matter, he's saying if there's things in your heart that are not right and you do that, here's what he goes on to say, if you drinks and eats in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, he's not discerning God's body. For this reason, there are many who are spiritually weak and spiritually sick among you and many sleep. For if you would judge ourselves, here's what he's saying, if you would self-examine, if you make a judgment of your relationship with God, if you find anything, if you would fix it, then you would not be judged. That's what it goes on to say in the text there. If you would judge yourself, examine yourself, then God won't have to judge you. It continues, but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Think about self-examination, finding this balance. To me, a great example is King David in Psalms. King David is very self-reflective. In fact, if you look at it, King David is almost bipolar at times. In his faith, he really is. If you read it with an open heart and mind, you'll see that he's all over the map in terms of where he's at. One moment, he's adamant that he is with God and he is right with God. He's got all the confidence that he knows he is standing in opposition against wicked and sinful men. But then almost right after, sometimes almost immediately after, he'll talk about feeling alone, uncertain, wonders where God is at. He worries he wonders if God is hearing his prayers. He even tells God, or asks God, don't take your spirit from me. 
So David vacillates. Here's the thing, King David is introspective. Now some would say that's unstable, but yet he's a man that's, he's called a man after God's own heart. So I think that we would do well to be like David. If he's a man who has a heart for God, then that's what we want to have. See, and here's why. Behind it all, uh, it looked like maybe he was all over the map, but I think here's what it was for David. He desired, he so desired to be right with God. And that gave him a hunger and a humility. I think those two go together, a hunger and humility. To ask and to do anything to make sure he was right with God. So today I want to look at self-examination. I want to ask, what has God been revealing to you during this time? During this trial, what has he been showing you about yourself, about your relationship with him? God is always revealing things in us. He's always testing us. He is. Everything's a constant test. Now, it's not because he's a God who enjoys testing us, um, but it's because he's trying to reveal things about us. And that's all part of our process of growth. As we grow in maturity and discernment, as we grow in love, as we grow in sanctification. Good analogy I've heard many people describe is we are like an onion. God's always peeling back layer upon layer. But here's the thing. God can peel back layers all day long in your life. He can try to show you things all the time. But you're only going to grow if you're willing to self-examine and take it to heart. So during this, what has God revealed to you about your walk with him? About your faith? Have you been agitated or at peace? Do you miss fellowship with other believers? Or do you feel like it's nice having a break from doing church? Think about that again. I, you know, I'm really curious as a pastor to see once we can get back to meeting, how many people rush back to be together because the Bible says that we are not to forsake the gathering together. In fact, it says that even as we get closer to Christ's return, we should actually increase the amount that we get together. So right now, do you, do you miss the fellowship with believers or do you enjoy the break from church? That's kind of a revealing thing, isn't it? What's God been revealing to you about your heart, your soul, your relationship with him? What's he revealing to you about your priorities right now? Now, I said that these vlogs I was going to do was going to be simply me sharing what God has spoke to my heart. And so here's what I've been wrestling with lately. I'll just be honest with you and you can talk to my wife. She can tell you, uh, you know, at times I've been uh, a little crazy. Um, during this time, God's continued like he's always done to peel back layers of my own heart and my own life. He's revealed things in my heart. Um, things that I've had to deal with that he has used to peel back some more layers. I've had to deal with a few Christians um, that have acted very unchrist like I've done some very ungodly things. I've had to deal with a friend dying of cancer. It's been very difficult for me to not personally be able to connect with our church family. It's been hard. Uh, I don't like the isolation I'm, I'm finding out. It's been hard for me to, to feel like I can be a faithful pastor with this sort of distance. And I have been struggled being at peace with it, being patient just waiting on God and letting go. I like to be proactive. If you know anything about me, I have a hard time just waiting. I've had moments of agitation, but I love knowing God is working and revealing things in me. It is needed and I embrace it. So listen to me, dear Christian. I want to say this out there. I'm going to ask the question I've asked already. I'm going to ask it again, but what is God revealing to you about yourself? And if you're thinking that God hasn't really showed you anything, that he hasn't revealed something in your heart, it's more likely that he has revealed things, but you're not self-examining, that you're just not willing to see what he's trying to show you. Because I tell you what, none of us have arrived. We all have areas to grow. Until either we die, we go to glory, or he returns. We all have areas to grow. And I know many Christians out there have had similar feelings and struggles. And don't make that mistake of thinking, well, once things go back to the way they were, I'll be fine. If you are struggling, God's trying to show you something so that we will go through this and that we will grow through this. Let's be honest during this time and press into God. Let's come out of it with a deeper love for God, for the lost, a deeper hunger for him, for love, uh, a deeper love for church and community. What has God revealed to you? Do you lean on all of God's words, not just the ones that you like, but the entirety of God's word? Do you, you pull it all and say, you know what? I want the good, the bad, the ugly. I want everything of God's word. And I apply that to everything that I do. Do you let God's spirit lead you? I think so much we have this preconceived idea of what church should look like that uh, we don't really let the Spirit lead us. It's hard to let go. What is revealed to you about your soul and your spirit? Sometimes it's hard to self-examine because it can get into areas of doubt and confusion and whatnot, but you need to know this beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you. Trust God that he's a good father, but he's always looking to grow us. So self-examine yourself by God's grace with the power of the Holy Spirit with good believers around you that can speak wisdom into your life and compare yourself to the word of God and let him grow you. Now, in the next few vlogs, I'm going to look at things like communion, ask a question like in America, are we as Christians like Egypt? 
We'll discuss how important unity is amongst Christians and churches during these times and many other topics. Now, what I want you to do is um, we made the mistake on the videos before that we clicked the wrong button, but we're going to click it so that you can put comments down there. I want to hear a comment from you, whether it be on Facebook or whether it be in the video here. I want to hear right now, what is God revealing to you during this difficult time? What he's been speaking to you? What's he showing you? I love to hear what he's been to sound off on that as we share ideas. And let's be transparent and honest. Uh, I think transparency leads to more transparency and leads to growth. So at the bottom, make a comment, share what God has revealed to you during this time. Um, at this point, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, mercy, and love, Lord. We don't always understand what's happening. It can be difficult. We can struggle. And Father, I know for me, and I'm sure for others, you would view things about us that maybe we don't want to see. Maybe things that we thought we had grown past or gotten beyond or we don't want to deal with. But Father, we love you. We trust you. Continue to help us grow. Help us to make honest assessment. And yet, Lord, let's hold steadfast that confidence that we who truly put our faith in Jesus can be assured that we are a child of God. So help us find that balance. Help us to look at our own heart. Help us to grow through this. So, Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Take care. We look forward to seeing you very soon.